want to be sure to avoid any confusion. So I want to show a couple little points that you may may not have been clear in some of the previous videos. In the one assignment that we're working with the bow and the Valentine's Day card, you need to have the bow and the Valentine's Day card in one file, but at the same time you also need to have an image of, of someone special or an animal or anything that's special to you. So we have to be sure to get that image into the same location that the bow and the Valentine's Day card, all of that is. There's a couple different ways or there's multiple ways to do that inside of Photoshop. One of the ways that I showed you earlier was to get the two get the files together somewhere locally and bring all of them in into one document. And I'll, I'll show you a reminder on that in just a minute. Another way to do this is to get, once again, to the image that you have. And so just if it's in a folder, whatever, wherever you have it, be sure that you get to where the image is, the photo of your loved one or where, whoever you want to have in this. Once you get to it, and this should work the same way on Macintosh or on Windows, when you right click on the image, so I'm right here and I'm going to right click on the image, on a Macintosh you get a choice of open with and now I can go down and select open with Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. With the Windows you should be able to also right click on the file and choose open with Adobe Photoshop 2017 too. I'm going to go ahead and do this and it's going to pop open and it's going to show you that image inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And now we see that image in Photoshop. That image can be copied and pasted over into the other file where you have the bow and the gift and, and the card itself, the actual card, the Valentine's Day card. Now, I already have that one open, but just so you know, um, I'm, I'm going to close it. I've got it right here. That's the file that you need. And be sure that you have the one that I sent back out a corrected version because it was missing the red bow. I've got the, the red bow is, there's two red bows. There's the bow that's part of the card itself. If I turn off and on, you'll see the red bow there over here in the layer. But then I have a separate of the same red bow, but it's just the bow by itself. Because in a minute, we may end up destroying the red bow that is in the layer here where the Valentine's Day card is. We may actually get rid of it by accident. So then we have the red bow that we can just put back on, turn it back on again later. Anyway, I'm going to close this up. So that way, all we have open is this picture right here. I'm going to minimize this just so you see my desktop again. Anytime that you have a file that ends with .psd, so it ends with .psd, that means it is a Photoshop document. When you double click on that, it's going to open up in Photoshop if Photoshop is installed on your computer. Now what I need to do is I need to get that other picture in here. Somehow get it over here to where all of this and all of this is. To do that, I'm just going to go up and you notice these tabs and you just go up here and select that tab. Once you select that tab, what you can do is go over to select and choose all. You can also actually just go and choose control A on a Windows machine. You would hit the button or hit your keys that are control A or on a Macintosh you would select command A. That means select all. But in this case, if you don't remember those keys, you can just go and choose Select All. You notice now that we get those marching ants, we call them, totally around the selection. We can now copy this so we can paste it over into that other file right up here, the bow. All I need to do is go up to Edit and choose Copy. Or, once again, Control-C on your keyboard or Command-C. So we have copied that image. Now we're going to go back up here to the actual file that we want to paste it into. And we're going to go right here. And now 
when we paste it, it will add it as a new layer. Notice right now you have the red bow over here. If I turn off the Valentine's Day card, you'll see just the bow by itself. If you'll notice the transparency, that's the red bow right now. I'm going to turn back on the Valentine's Day card. So we now have two layers. If I choose paste, it's going to paste that into a new layer. So I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to choose paste and it's just going to paste it right here in this window. And there it is. It's a bigger image than the one that we had because it's more rectangular. So we'd be able to move it around. If we want to get the move tool, we can move it however we want. Notice that the picture, it actually comes over here to the right. And I can just go over here and just kind of slide it over the way that I want it. And notice, it, like I said, it's, it's a bigger picture. It's a bigger image because the actual Valentine's Day card is more of a square. Now we just begin working with things, but first you need to be sure to notice this picture is up at the very top. That in the, in the top layer. And I can even double click here and rename this. So I would always recommend that you name your layers so you know what's what. But that picture needs to be down at the bottom. All that we need to do is put our hand over that picture in the little thumbnail area and drag it down to the bottom and now it disappears. It's not gone. If we turn off the Valentine's Day card, we'll see that it's there. So it's ready to go. What we want to do is we want to expose this picture, part of it, through the Valentine's Day card. I'm going to turn this layer back on so you can see. So I want a part of that picture. I want that picture from the top of the ribbon up. So what we're going to do is assign a mask to that. And this is what I've done in one of the tutorials already. But I want to go ahead and show you once again while, we've, while we're here. We want to apply a mask to the Valentine's Day card. And the mask is nothing different than you holding a mask over your face or over anything. Whatever you do to the mask, it doesn't affect your face. If you paint the mask or anything else, you just drop it down. It doesn't affect your face. So we're going to put a mask over this card. It's not going to destroy the card. We're just going to make alterations to the mask itself. So I'm going to go down here. I've, I've selected once again the Valentine card. I'm going to go down here, and this right here is called a layer mask. And we're just going to put a mask on that layer. And if you notice now, it doesn't look like it's changed at all. Nothing looks any different. But in a minute, whenever we make alterations, it does not affect the actual layer. It's just affecting the mask itself. So what I mentioned to you recently is if I paint black, anything black on this mask, it will expose and show you the layer beneath it. It's essentially like turning it transparent or essentially like painting it or taking and scraping the paint off and showing what's below it if you're in a window and you've got a painted window and you're going to scrape it off. If you paint this black, then basically that area that's black will expose what's below the layer. What we were talking about is using gradients. And if we go over and we select the gradient, as I've shown you, if you select right here on the gradient and if you make sure you can't use the gradient that goes from black to transparent. I believe that some people may have done that, and they ended up with um, transparency in a lot of places. You have to use the layer, the, the gradient, the actual gradient that goes from black to white, not from black to notice the checkerboard. That's gradient. That is transparent. We want the gradient that goes from black to white, and we also want to be sure we're using the linear now we're ready to go and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to draw the gradient upwards up towards the left we want the gradient to go kind of diagonally from here upwards 
So not across, because then you're going to end up with the area where that is not going to be transparent. If we go from right here around where the ribbon is and paint upwards, wherever we stop, wherever I let go, it's going to start turning black. So if I let off right now, you'll see that it has now, it's essentially painted that area black. How do we know this? Look over here on the right. Look in this layer and look at the layer mask. On the layer mask right here, you see a white area and you see a black area. I just used the gradient tool for, for it to leave this area white, but for it to make this area black. So wherever it turned it black, it exposed what was behind it. Now, as I mentioned the other day, the one thing that kind of it didn't perfectly get everything. So over here, we still see a little bit of the stripe. To fix that, I can go and get a paintbrush and paint right here black and it will then expose the rest of the picture. So I'm going to go over and select the paintbrush and I'm going to make sure that what I paint is black and if you notice right here the foreground color if I paint something right now it's going to be black. And I'm going to choose the paint. I'm, you can choose all the different sizes. You can make it huge. You can make it have a hard edge or you can make it where it's soft and faded. So I'm going to use, I'm going to stick with this soft round where it kind of has it, where it's not going to be a hard edge. And go right here and choose that. And now I can go in here and just as long as the gradient right here, as long as the mask is selected, wherever I paint with that, with my paint black, it exposes the rest of that picture. And the reason it's not killing the ribbon is that ribbon is a whole separate layer right up here. That's a, that's a, you'll see it did destroy. If I turn off the ribbon right now, you'll see it did destroy some of the layer that had the ribbon. But I thought about this ahead, and I went ahead and put a layer that has the ribbon separately. So when you click on it and turn the ribbon on, it just goes over the top of it. Now, one little issue I do have is the ribbon doesn't quite meet, match over here. It doesn't quite go where it should. But in general, this looks pretty good. And once again, all we had to do was go in and turn, take the gradient and draw just a tiny bit where it would be black the rest of the way up. If you need to, just watch this a couple times to see if you understand what we're talking about on this. The only other thing that we need to be sure to do here is to go ahead and if you're finished with that, is to be sure to save this. And you could either save it as a new file. So if I choose Save As, and maybe I would want to just save it to my desktop for now, and I'll give it a new name. And then I can go back and use the other file later. And make sure that it says Photoshop right down here in the format right here. Now we're set to go. We can choose Save. And I've saved it to the desktop. We'll choose OK here. And this looks perfectly fine. And we can then use this. We can print this. We can use it multiple different ways. We could put it on Facebook or on a web page. Whatever we want to do, we would have to save it out as another file type, which we'll talk about that later.